Welcome back, Wolfers here. Looking to make games using Unity? Well, you have come to the right place. Let's get started. Hey guys, before we get started, I just wanted to thank you guys. Uh, thank you for watching my videos. It really means a lot to me. I make these content to uh, show you guys how to make games and I hope you guys appreciate it as much as I, you know, like making them. Also, thank you to the new subscribers. We have now hit 35. Our next milestone is 40. So, if you haven't uh, subscribed to me yet, don't forget to do so. If you'd like this video at the end, please hit the like button. It lets YouTube know that you like this video and it's worth watching, so it'll rank it higher. Thank you. Now let's get started. Okay, so let's open up our project and let's get started. We are going to start by creating a new script within our scripts folder and name it player input. Double click on it to open it. The purpose of the player input class will be to create a controller with all of the movement functionality we will need. This is so that we can re reuse this code and not have duplicate functionality on different scripts. We will be setting the max number of players that the game will allow here. Before we get started with this class, we need the following. An enumerator class that we can use as the player ID so that we know what each numerical value each ID represents. We also need to make the player controller class which will have the functionality needed to move the player object around as well as store uh, some other data like the keys used to move the player. This will allow us to create custom key bindings for the user if we want to. This class will contain a constructor which will set up any initial values this object has. We will need to pass this object the player ID that the player input uh, will get. We may want to change the up and down keys at some point for different players. We need to create this function that will allow us to do that. It will take in two parameters of type key code for up and down keys. Lastly, we need a function that will give us a direction in which to move the player object. In this case, the panels. We will make a function called movePlayer that will return a vector 3. We will always make the direction 0 so that we don't move unless a key has been pressed. Since these panels only move up or down, we should only use or modify the Y value. Finally, we return the key, uh, the direction, and that is it for this class. If you enjoy my videos, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Click on the bell icon to get notified when new videos get uploaded. Let's now create the player input class. We will need a way to store the player controllers. We will do this using a dictionary so we don't have to loop through the list to get a controller out. We will be using player enum or id as the key for this dictionary. A dictionary is, a, is similar to a hash table where they use a key value pair to store information allowing for faster lookup time. This class will be a static class so we can easily call it and not have the need for an instance to access the data. We will need a way to tell how many players we have currently and the max number of players allowed. Register function will return a player controller object. This is where we ask the system to make us a new controller for us to use. If the max number of players has been reached, then it will return a null or empty object. Save your file and let's go into Unity. And 
we now need to create another script. Let's call this one player panel. This script will be the player object that will request the player controller. And then we will use this to move the player. Some of the variables we will need are as follows. Player controller, paddle speed, which we will set to 10, a vector three named panel direction, which we will set to zero. In the start function, we now need to initialize the controller. Let's, requ let's request it from the player input. Lastly, we need to use the update loop to move the panel. Before we use the controller, we do need to check to make sure it's not null. After that, we can call the player, the move player function that returns the direction in which the player wants to move. Then all we need to do is to move the player as we did the ball. Position plus equals direction times speed times time delta time. Save your work and let's head over to Unity. We now need to set up the paddles with their correct script. Let's make a sprite object. Change the sprite image to anything you may like. I will use the uh, input field background as my image. Then on the draw mode from the sprite renderer, we need to make sure it is set to tile. We are going to set the size to width 0.5 and the height to 2. Then we need to add a component to it, a box collider 2D. Set it to be a trigger as we usually do, and the size will be the same as before, 0.5 and 2. Let's also change the position to negative 9.0, 0, and 0. We just want to place it on the left side of the screen. If you find that this does not work for you, then feel free to change the x value. The last two things we need to add to this object is the ball collision script set the normal to be 100 zero, zero. then we are going to add the player paddle script save everything and let's play test it let me know in the comments down below what you learned today and what you thought about this video we should now be able to move the paddle up or down and hit the ball but uh, there are a few things we need to fix. The paddle goes out of the screen and the ball, maybe we may want to change the ball direction if we hit the ball with the paddle as we move up or down. What we need to do now is to be able to check if we are outside of the camera view. We need to make, make it so that it changes based on the screen resolution we can't just make some objects as we did for the ball because it would not scale with different resolution so we will also need to make that change let's start off by creating another script we will call it camera bound this script will be responsible for calculating the coordinates we need to be able to check whether the paddle is going off screen the first class we will need to work on is the bounds class. We will need to make a rectangle by having a vector 2 with the min values or min size and then another vector 2 that will contain the max values or the max size of the screen or any other object. Yes, we will be doing our very own simple collision detection code here. We will be setting these two vectors to zero as their initial value. We will also need to get uh, to make two getters to be able to access the data later on. The last thing we need is the constructor which will take a vector two. This will be the initial dimensions 
to make the rectangle we need. A min bounds will be negative x and y, and then max will be all pass positives. Okay, so now back to the top. We will have a static bounds object named camera bounds. This will be the rectangle that represents the edges of the screen. In the start function, we can get the camera and we will check to see if this is an orthographic view. For these calculations that we're going to be doing to work, it needs to be orthographic. Then we will need to calculate the bounds based on the screen width and height and the orthographic size. The orthographic size is pretty much the vertical size of the screen. To get the horizontal size, we need to make a simple calculation. We first need to multiply the vertical size of the screen and times this by the screen width. Then we divide this number by the screen height, feed these two numbers into our bounds object, and we're all done. Let's now work on the collision part. We're going to make this a static function so we can access it anywhere without an instance of an object. It will return a vector 3 which will be the changed position with the desired offsets. We will be passing the current vector 3 position that we want to check along with the bounds of the paddles or whatever object we need to perform this check on. Think of the bounds as the thickness of the object. Without it, it would just be a single point in space. The check we need to perform is pretty simple. We will be checking the top and the bottom so we know that this is the Y. Therefore, if we would like to know if we are not within the bounds on the top, we would have to check the position.y plus the bounds max.y. If that is greater or equal to the camera bounds max.y, this would turn out to be if this would turn out to be true, then we know we are outside of the top of the camera edge. Now we need to, what we need to do is to calculate how much we are above that edge and backtrack by that much. To get the distance we are poking through, we just have to subtract the camera bounds dot max dot y minus the position dot y plus the bounds dot max dot y. This will let us know how much to go back. So all we need to do is to add position.y plus equals the over value. To check the bottom, we would have to flip the signs from greater or equal to to less than or equal to. And we would be using the min.y this time from the bounds and that's it let's return this new position and we're all done we now need to use it in our paddle code so let's go to it let's add a bounds object for this since we will need this now we need to calculate the bounds and lastly we need to use it with the new camera bounds code. After the call we made to move the object, we need to check that and uh, get 
the return value and assign it to our transform as our new position. Save and let's go back to Unity and check it out. Before we can test it, we need to set up the new code. Select the camera and add the camera bounce script to, to it. Okay, now hit the play test button and let's check it out. We can now move up and down and we are prevented from going out of the screen. Awesome. We are going to stop here. I hope you guys like this video because I love making it. If you would like a challenge, try and do the following. Next week, you can check the answers. Number one, make it so that when a player hits the ball while, the, while they're moving up or down and the ball is going in the opposite direction from the paddle, the ball changes direction. Number two, make the wall bounds change their position and collider size to match different screen resolutions. If you like this video, smash that like button. This is to let YouTube know that this video was worth watching so other people can find it. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notifications when new videos get uploaded. Stay tuned for our next video. Don't forget to connect with us on social media. If you want a way to support what I do, uh, head over to my Patreon page. The links are in the description down below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.